Well, my name is Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, middle initial L, last name Robinson, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. Good afternoon, Dr. Robinson. Good afternoon, sir. What is your occupation, sir? I'm the Deputy Chief Medical Examiner. And where are you a Deputy Chief Medical Examiner? Broward County Medical Examiner and Trauma Services. How long have you worked with the Broward County Medical Examiner? Seven years. What is your education? A Bachelor of Science degree from Syracuse University, four years, medical school, Howard University, four years, medical degree, residency in anatomic and clinical pathology, four years, ending in board certification, one year forensic pathology, ending in board certification. Okay. And where have you worked since your medical degree? I have been, I was employed by the U.S. Navy, multiple duty stations, most recent duty stations, Dover Air Force Base. And how long were you in the Navy? Thirty years. And you retired in what year? July 1st, 2015. Okay. And you retired what rank were you? Captain. Okay. Do you have any certifications? I do. I have certification in anatomic and clinical pathology certified. I have certification in forensic pathology certified. Okay. And you're licensed to practice medicine where? I'm licensed to practice medicine in Nevada, Florida, and Maryland. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you have occasion to respond to a certain location? I did. Where did you respond to? Marjory Storm, MSD High School. Okay. And you went there because why? I was the deputy chief medical examiner as I was responding at the direction of my boss, who was the chief medical examiner, Dr. Malik. Okay. As a medical examiner, have you testified as an expert in forensic pathology before? I have. And how many times? Twenty to thirty, best I can tell. In what courts? Both federal and civil. Okay. So when you responded to Marjory Storm and Douglas, what did you do? Basically, when we first got there, I was met by three investigators. Initially, we waited for FBI to complete the crime scene investigation. At that point, myself and the three investigators entered the building and basically completed photography on the scenes and basically placed the scenes in human rain pouches for transportation back to our office. Okay. On Thursday, February the 15th, 2018, do you have occasion to perform an autopsy? I did. Okay. Let me show you state's exhibits. I'm going to read this again to the record, Doctor. 21H, 21G, 21F, 21E, 21D, 21C, 21D, 21A, 20Z, and 5E. Dr. Robinson, do you want to take a look at these exhibits? Yes, sir. Do you recognize that? I do. And who is that? This is our case 18-0530, also identified as Nicholas Dorrit. Okay. And you performed an autopsy on Nicholas Dorrit? I did. Did you happen to see Nicholas Dorrit when you were at Marjory Stoneman Douglas on February the 14th, 2018? 
I did. All right. At this time, would these photographs, Doctor, aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the nature of Nicholas Dorette's wounds and his cause of death? Yes, they would. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to offer uh, State's Exhibits 21H, 21G, 21F, 21E, 21A. 21C, 21B, 21A, 20Z, 5, 5D, that's already in evidence, that's 206. Five, you said 5D is already entered as Yes, ma'am, we object to admission of photographs based on uh, all the objections and ground uh, line D, am I out 12, please? Okay, so noted. Over the defense objection, states 20Z as in zebra for identification will be received as 325. 20Z like zebra will be entered as 325. 21A as an alpha, 326. 21B like Bravo, 327. 21C like Charlie, 328. 21D as in Delta, 329. 21E will be entered as 330. 21F as in Frank, 331. 21G as in George, 332 and 21H333. Dr. Wilder, put some mark in that. I want to show you the state exhibit 206. Do you recognize that person? I do. Is that Nicholas Durrett? It is. And age and height and weight? 17 years, uh, 72 inches in length, and he weighed 174 pounds. There are, there are some marks on the screen. I don't know if you can see them. There's like four arrows yeah, I, I got and some check marks. There you go. Thank you.
Okay, Dr. Robinson, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit Mark uh, 325 that has been introduced in evidence. And uh, could you uh, explain, you have that labeled wound A, correct? That is correct. Okay, and uh, could you tell us what that is and what damage that wound caused? Uh, what we're looking at is the wound labeled A is an entrance gunshot wound. Uh, basically, what the damage it caused, it basically passed through his right shoulder going under the right clavicle or collarbone, uh, lacerating, transecting the uh, right subclavian artery and vein, also noted as the right subclavian vessels. I'm sorry, could you just speak up a little bit? Oh, well, okay. If you wouldn't mind just scooting the chair a little bit towards the microphone, that would probably Okay. Uh, again, um, the bullet passed under the right clavicle or the collarbone. Uh, at that point, transected or lacerated major vessels, specifically the right subclavian artery and the right subclavian vein. It proceeded to pass through the upper part of the right lung. From there, it entered the pericardium, which is the heart sac surrounding the heart. Um, at that point, it also lacerated um, what's called the right main bronchus, which is a breathing tube that goes into the right lung. It lacerated uh, the aorta, which is the major vessel leaving the heart. It actually passed through the left side of the heart, exited the uh, lower left side of the heart, um, passed through the lower portion of the left lung, and lodged in the left side of the chest wall. Was that wound in and of itself fatal? It was. Okay. Now, I'll show you states to do it. Mark um, 326, Dr. Robinson. Can you tell us what that is? This uh, labeled our number 180530, this is a graze wound. It's a grazing gunshot wound of his abdomen. Okay. And a graze wound is what? A graze wound is when the bullet passes very close to the skin but doesn't enter the body or lacerate the skin, but basically abrades it or scrapes it as it passes by. And show you State's Exhibit 327. Again, okay, this uh, labeled 18-0530. This is for orientation purposes. This is the left thigh, the front of the left thigh. And it's a very similar wound. This is a graze wound of the grazing gunshot wound of the left thigh. Okay. The graze wound to the left thigh and to the abdomen. Can you tell whether those those two graze wounds were prior to the shot, uh, the fatal shot uh, in the shoulder that went through his heart? I cannot. Okay. So you can't say if they're post mortem or anti mortem? That's correct. And showing you stage exhibit 328. What we're looking at for orientation purposes is the right hip. And the uh, wound labeled B is a what's a ballistic injury, a penetrating ballistic injury. Okay. Uh, and what is significance of that wound? What Ba it, it's, it's a wound caused by fragments, uh, sometimes referred to as shrapnel, not specifically a gunshot wound in, in, the, in so much that you have a projectile, but just fragments uh, that are, that are uh, traveling. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Could you just scoot a little Scoot, okay. Um, uh, basically, this is a, a type of wound that is called ballistic injury. It's not a gunshot wound per se because we don't have an intact or partial projectile. It's more of like fragments flying. Uh, like we said, something has been referred to as shrapnel before. And this is a penetrating um, injury here, and this was, uh, this one penetrated to a depth of approximately one-eighth inch, so it was fairly superficial. Was there hemorrhaging in the wound? There was. And what does that indicate? That indicates that there was uh, blood pressure and most likely uh, represents anti-mortem injury. So prior to the shot in the shoulder? Was prior to or very close in proximity to. And States Exhibit 329, Dr. Robinson. Again, for orientation purposes, we're still in the right hip, just a little bit lower down. Um, this is also a, a ballistic, penetrating ballistic injury. As we talked about, it's basically fragments flying. This was a deeper penetration. It went to a depth of approximately three and a half inches into the muscle. Okay, and uh, was there hemorrhaging in this one? There was. In indicative of what? Uh, Anti-mortem injury. Okay, okay, prior to death. Prior to death, yes. Okay. And State's Exhibit 330. What we're looking at is the uh, side of his right ankle. These are multiple uh, superficial ballistic injuries, um, basically metal fragments and other types of things that are just flying and penetrate the skin at that point. Okay. Uh, 
Dr. Robinson, were you able to determine the cause of death, death of Nicholas Dorrett? I was. And what was the cause of death? Gunshot wound of the chest. Okay. And I will show you uh, State's Exhibit 331. Uh, the, what we're looking at, uh, labeled uh, decedent's name, projectile, left chest, is the projectile removed from the decedent's left chest. Your Honor, I have any further questions of Dr. Robinson. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Thank you, sir.